fact, well, you know what? I'm going to talk about the, the title of today's message, in case you're wondering. I'm probably going to just get it. God has made us fear destroyers. And we live in a season, in a time, where fear is rampant. And if you're not careful, it can get into you in every area. So I, I, like this morning, I could look out and say, oh my goodness, the church is empty. Now listen, I want to talk to God. He said, they came for something, you give them the full meal. You guys, I'm not going to give you this little bit. I'm going to give you the full thing. Come on, are you with me? I'm going to give you all of it. But I could say, well, Lord, what are we going to do? We got this, we got that. And, you know, and you told us to do this, and you told us to do that. And what it, would that be called? Fear. And fear turns in, it, it, it becomes unbelief, which is then the opposite of faith. Which then means you're not even pleasing God no more, and He's not even hearing any of your prayers. Which then confirms the very fear that, which was a, fear is a lie, by the way. Fear comes from the enemy. There's no truth in fear. So then it confirms the lie, the fear that the enemy told you in the first place, because it took you out of the will of God. Y'all still with me? But God has called us to be fear destroyers. So, like this morning. And there's been lots of times, I'll talk about the church, I can talk about that, right? Nobody gets offended. I mean, well, I can talk about y'all's personal business, we all know, but some of you might get offended before I got done. Right? I mean, if you're not going to, you, I'll do right for it. <laughs> some of you are like, well, I, oh, you want my, okay. You know, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Just for the record. <laughs> but, uh, God's called us to be fear destroyers, but you know, I can't tell you how many times I've had people say they were going to be the reason this place shut down or that this place was going to be shut down. There's some weeks like this morning, I'm like, uh, Lord, I should be concerned, but I know you've got this, you know. And I can't tell you how many times it's even we've looked around in the last 10 or 11 years, and I'm not happy about it. I'm waiting for the cycle to break. Mm -hmm. But when it's looked like this, and then always right, and it's always right before God just again. Anybody? Mm -hmm. yeah. You can come on up, sis, because i got to get away from this speaker. It's an echo. Oh, I'm waiting on Layla. Oh, you're waiting. All right, never mind. I thought she waited on me to get out of her way. <laughs> no. We're just talking already this morning. I might start preaching a little bit. I'm resisting this morning. I don't think I have the coronavirus or whatever it's called, but the way my life has went for the last six years, I don't leave anything past the enemy. So uh, I'm not giving it to you. Yeah, we're going to talk about being fear destroyers. Come on. I ain't been nowhere to get it. I ain't been to China. I don't go to airports. Huh? I'm looking at this label or the heading, and I'm like, God made us fear destroyers? Yeah. Made us fear destroyers. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting wrong. He made us to be destroyers of fear. There we go. Okay. <laughs> but I have to just give it like the Holy Spirit speaks yeah. to me. Mm -hmm. You know, but to be a fear destroyer, you have to recognize that you have the capability of having fear, mm -hmm. and that every and then and it's a tool that the enemy is using all around you. Yeah. Yes. And so this morning, you know, I can look around. He, he tries to get me in fear all the time. And if I ever get into it, then I start slipping out, out of the promises of God because unfaith, uh, unbelief starts coming in. You all with me? You, you ever been around somebody that's pastored and they got into fear and unbelief and then they start beating the sheep to yeah. try to get the promises together? Yeah. Well, they're just human, but they let fear get the better of them. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Mm -hmm. But this morning, if you're not careful, you'll get the same way. Because he didn't say that, uh, uh, that uh, you know, I was, med well, he didn't say that we wouldn't get sick. He didn't say that we wouldn't, uh, you know, face trials. He said, be of good cheer. I've already overcome that. He said, count it all joy. Now, I went through a few things in my life, and I said, I hope you think this is funny, because I'm counting joy right now. I don't see no joy in it, but I'm counting it for joy. And when I got done, I had a lot of joy. I was, I, and you know what? What has happened is my joy bank has has uh, perpetually been filled up with things that I can remember back thinking that don't even phase me now. When I go through them, I'm still ha 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 all the way through. Mm -hmm. And as I get more of that 
counting it all joy, the less that has an effect on me. But we're human, right? How many in here has there been a spirit of fear trying to get on you within the last week? Amen. Thank you all for being honest. And if you notice, I really believe it's a sign of the end times. I believe it's a sign that the, Jesus is coming back soon, and it's one of the greatest tools of the enemy. And, and by the way, you probably should, God's give us wisdom. You know whose idea it was to wash your hands and wash dishes? It's God. It's in the Bible. <laughs> he told you how to have personal hygiene for people who knew what personal hygiene was. <laughs> But some people go crazy with that. Because you know what they get into? Fear. fear. Wisdom and fear don't go together. Wisdom and faith do. Wisdom says, I've done my part in the natural. I'm going to trust God for the rest. It's like when you pay your tithes. Sometimes a... Two plus two don't equal four when you pay your tithes, but you do it with God, and all of a sudden, two, two plus two equals 16. Because yep. your wisdom and faith went together. Well, we'll just, we'll just read here for a minute. Y'all are, are quiet this morning. Psalms 91, verse 1, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. How do you know if you're in the secret place? Number one, you made Jesus Lord of your life. Is he king over you? Is he Lord over you? And, are, and listen, it's a choice. Are you choosing to stay under his covering? Because if you're not, in this world, you ought to be scared to death. Mm -hmm. I would not want to be outside the covering of Jesus Christ yeah. today. It is not a time to play games. It's not a time to play around. It's a time to be under his covering. Amen. It's the only security you got. And it says, I will save the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress. Listen, do I need a refuge or a fortress mm -hmm. if I'm just skipping through the lilies? <laughs> I need a refuge and a fortress when I'm at war. When battle is going on, when all hell is coming against me, that means Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He showed up to eat my lunch and I ain't got no more. And I ain't ate in three days, and the, and the enemy starts, you start getting like that, that young a prophet that was with Elijah, and he says, they've surrounded us, and he, Elijah prayed, he said, Lord, open his eyes and let him see those around us. Some of you need to realize if you get inside the refuge, the whole battle looks different. Mm -hmm. It's a whole lot harder to take a place that's secure up on a hill. Mm -hmm. They're going to take a whole lot more forces to do that. But you need to realize that he is your refuge, he is your fortress. But so many people quote these things, but they, but then they resent needing it. Yeah. They resent needing it. God, why am I doing going through this? Because you've got an enemy that hates you. He wants to destroy you, and he don't care if you're... Listen, the thing is, do you see all these people in the world right now? There's this, this virus is going around. By the way, it was made up a long time ago. They just, it just got too big for them to control. It's just out now. So, uh, moving along, everybody is just, whoa, and before that it was something else, whoa, it keeps people in a constant state of fear. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, even for in our country, for depending on what politician side you're on, everybody's scared to death, the other one's going to do something stupid, and they're all stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just calling it like I see it. Why? Because fear is ruling them. If you do anything out of fear, it's not of God. Now listen, I'm not saying you can't get afraid. I realize, you know, if something, the enemy even tries, used to, used to try to torment me from where I came from. He'd tell me, well, I'm going to do this to your kids. Or I'll do this to Pastor Tammy. Then what you going to do? And he wanted me to react in the natural. And I kept having to reel that guy back in, but I over the years, I fed the other guy enough that he rules the house. Amen. And I just said, well, you know what? I don't know about that, and that ain't happened yet, so I'm not going to worry about that. Get behind me, Satan. Because, see, that's a spirit of fear, whether you recognize it or not. Mm -hmm. All the what-ifs and the coulda, shoulda, wouldas is a spirit of fear trying to come in and control your mind. 
Bible says, take every thought captive and exalt itself above the mind of Christ. Amen. But see, in order for us to start destroying the fear in the world around us, we have to destroy the fear that's trying to come within us first. Amen. you got to get its number. Because I believe today God has called us to be fear destroyers in the nation around us. You say, well, I need some scripture for that. Well, he said, when you go in to their house, he said, you bless them. And if they don't accept you, you get the dust off your feet, take your peace back. Come on. What does peace do to fear? It destroys it. He said, and then go on. So if you, so if we go in some place, we should be fear destroyers, and our peace should be calming the whole place around us. Amen. And they're going to do one or two things. They're going to enjoy it or they're going to run away. Isaiah says they all run away when I show up to a restaurant. <laughs> In him will I trust. So you got to ask yourself, if you're going to be a fear destroyer, who are you trusting this morning? What are you trusting in? Come on, are you with me? Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowl and from the noise of pestilence. Uh, if you don't you know, realize King James, that means any trap and any kind of disease or any kind of destructive force is coming at you. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. He got you surrounded all over. Thou shalt not be afraid. Now fear brings makes you what? Afraid. By the terror by night. You know why night tears people, the terror of night and why darkness scares people so much? It's the fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. yep, amen. Fear of the unknown. And what happens is we work up our mental image of all this unknown to the point that it becomes this huge fear to us. And the Bible says you should know the truth and the truth shall make you free. I've counseled lots of people over the years. I think that thing's closer I get this way. I'm getting bigger. I thought I was getting smaller. And the one thing I have to ask him, well, what's the truth? What's the truth? And then you know what? By the time they get done with the truth, they see the whole thing. They see what it really is. <laughs> Because usually they've got something that the enemy's fed their mind so much and they've worked it up to be this true scenario and they don't know what's going to happen yet. Amen. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. Amen. So he, you should not be afraid for the terror by night, the unknown, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. And sometimes, you know, he don't really care if you see it coming. He's going to keep firing them anyway. Bible says that he, Bible says that we'll quench even the fiery darts of the enemy with the shield of faith. Faith is believing God is who He says He is, can do what He said He can do, reaching over to the unseen realm and bring the promises of God over in the seen realm. Amen. So that means uh, the arrow's coming, and you go, I don't think so. God said, No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Come on, Bible says, By His stripes I am healed. The Bible said, I will live and not die, declare the works of the Lord. Amen. The Bible said, I'm going to prosper and my seed's going to prosper. And I'm going to leave an inheritance for my children. Amen. Come on, are you? listen. But you've got to raise up the shield to start quenching the fear of the enemy. Because he will come in and he will just eat your lunch. Amen. Oh, Lord, that's a... <laughs> I just say it. He liked a fat kid at lunch that will never go away that says next to you. <laughs> Lord help me. <laughs> Maybe I was that kid. No, I wasn't. I, I was skinny back then. I don't know. I, don't, I can't just, I can't. I don't know how to get out of that, Lord. But anyway, that's what I was. <laughs> Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. How I many know there, sometimes there really is some something destructive in the darkness? But even when it's substantial, you're not to have any fear. You're to trust God. 
you know, when the doctor calls up and says, you've got cancer, or you have this other incurable disease, or you have this other one, all of a sudden, fear starts to come in, and he starts telling you when your life's over, and they start telling you how different your life's going to be when you have this or you have that. And, you know, and I, I've heard a lot of those things myself going through things, and all of a sudden, I've had to go back, no, I, I listen, I understand what you're saying, I appreciate your knowledge, Lord bless you, and in, the, in my spirit, I said, but I'm not accepting that over my life because what they just spoke are word curses and if I believe them fear comes with them and with fear then what's it do it gets me into unbelief unbelief takes me out of faith and the next thing I know I'm helping that thing to accomplish its task that it was set against me to do what's good preaching sister yeah. But I have to stay. Remember last week we talked about overcoming faith? Having that over... That is what it takes to be a fear destroyer. To stay in overcoming faith. If you missed that message, go back and look. If you watched it online, go back. You missed it. We can get it. If you watched it, praise God. You know what I'm talking about. No more for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Man, I can't tell you how many times I've read that and I've been encouraged. But I had a problem. I always put myself in the center of the guy with the sword. Anybody ever see that? I learned. It wasn't always me. Jesus was the one doing the heavy lifting. Amen. 10,000 by my right to the my, that's because there were warring angels all around me that they couldn't even get to me see what happens if we make it about us we also make it able for us we can be defeated we can get in fear mm -hmm. but we can't be if we stay in Christ if we're abiding in him mm -hmm. so we need to stay in him Come on, I know I'm going a little deep this morning. It's good. But if you're, listen, we're living in a world where fear is consuming everything around us. It's time, we may be a handful here this morning, but Jesus turned the world upside down with a handful. But if, we, if this week, if you'll get a hold of this thing and you'll leave here with a different mindset that says, you know what, you, you may be destroying fear in your life, but what about the fear in those around you? God called us to be givers of hope, to be ready to give an account every time something's asked of us, of the hope of Christ within us. Amen. He said, be ready to give an account of the hope of Christ within you. Well, hope is a fear destroyer. Amen. Yeah. Hope destroys fear. You know, when, when death comes at the door, so it takes who you love. The enemy comes to tell you just how destructive your life's going to be. But God, that's why God said uh, over in Matthew 5, 4, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. He didn't say might be, could be. He said they would be. And then, how I many you know that God, God is a God of restoration from Genesis to Revelation? And he comes in and starts restoring that person. It doesn't mean that things don't hurt. But I can promise you, it's sure not like what the devil was telling them it was going to be like. Come on, we can go this in every area. Fear always comes in. When I was when I was coming back to God, working my way back, <laughs> He told me a million different ways that I couldn't make it. You know what? He was right on most of them. But what I was doing was looking at it through me. Instead of looking at it with Christ in me. Amen. Me staying in Christ. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Listen, fear is going to show up. It's going to show up tomorrow. It's going to show up the day after. And it's going to increase until the day Jesus comes back. But you need to learn to be a fear destroyer in your life and those around you. And as long as it can get a piece of you, it'll keep, it, 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 it's just like a, it'll just keep eating at you. And eating. And eating. It knows no fill. It knows nowhere to stop. It'll eat until there's nothing left. Only with thy eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord 
which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. So where are you, have you made God your, if you're going to be a fear destroyer, you're going to have to make God your habitation. You're going to have to decide, I'm going to dwell inside the shadow of the Almighty. I'm going to spend my time with God. I'm, listen, I'm not talking about me being a little, little sister, Christy, uh, Joe, you know. The, we, 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 I've, seen, I've seen all the religious stuff throughout my life. And all of it always usually, and I'm talking about religion, not relationship with Jesus. Most of all the religious stuff made me want to puke. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about faking it till you make it. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about doing all these things out of legalistic because the word said, because somebody told you you had to. I'm talking about doing it because you want to. Amen. If you ain't got to want to, then you go, that's where you need to start. Amen. Thankfully, there was a man in the Bible that says, Lord, help thou my unbelief. A lot of people say he didn't have no faith. I say it takes a lot of faith to walk up to Jesus, the Son of a living God, who's doing miracles all around you, and say, help thou my unbelief. Amen. He realized he was struggling. He realized fear was at his door. Mm -hmm. And he said, Lord, help thou my unbelief. I believe that took a lot of faith, but he see, he realized his weakness. The Bible says, in our weakness, his strength is made perfect. And His grace is sufficient for us. Sometimes we need to say, Lord, I'm a little weak in this area. I feel vulnerable. Yeah. I feel a vulnerable. Yeah. I vulnerable. Vulnerable in this area. And when you feel that way, that's when fear will show up. Yes. You know? There's a reason, like, whenever he tries to bring sickness and things, he tries to wear you down with it, because he wants to get you in a state where you start losing hope and fear starts to come in. But Romans 15, 13 says he's the God of hope. Amen. And he'll fill you with all joy and peace through the power of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> Bible says hope deferred makes your heart sick. Mm -hmm. But when it comes, it's a tree of life, yeah. because your roots go down way deeper. And it sounds really good unless you're the one that's hopes deferred. <laughs> and you're the one sitting over there and fear is trying to come in. And then all of a sudden you're having to keep your head right, get all the other stuff right. And you're like, man, I don't know. But that's when you're going to have to decide you're going to be a fear destroyer because that enemy of fear is not backing off. And it's going to increase until the day Jesus comes back. So the church might as well rise up and start acting like true believers, acting like the warriors that God put in you, because just getting by ain't going to get it. And just getting you by ain't good enough no more. Amen. It's funny. People talk about, you know, like right now, the people, you know, I remember the old water fountain at work, the sickness and the coronavirus, everybody ain't going to talk about when I show up anymore, they don't want to talk about that stuff no more. <laughs> Nobody wants to talk about that with me. <clears throat> Not that I'm upset about that. <laughs> but I know deep down there's a reason why. Because that thing that fear was gripping them when I show up starts to change. Now there's some days that whenever I've been like, Lord, I need some help. Anybody, if you ain't been there, you need sometimes you, you're going to get there and you need to remember this. I remember that some days when I was like the guy that said, Lord, help thou, my unbeliever. Lord, is this ever going to break? <laughs> he like, shut up, stupid. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> you need to go encourage yourself in the Lord. You need to go pray in the Holy Ghost. Okay. <laughs> and that's what I go and do. And all of a sudden, faith starts to come up. And I'm like, whoo, I think I can swing out over hell on a cornstalk and spit in the devil's eye. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. And all of a sudden, listen, and then fear starts going, oh, man, he went and got his vitamin shot. <laughs> and if you're running low, sometimes you need to get your vitamin shot. Sometimes you've got to get out of your own head and get your head in the Word of God. And listen, I've been to the point where I've been so sick and all that stuff, it just felt like I was reading just to be reading. But listen, when I started praying in the Holy Ghost and reading, something started happening. Right. Amen. I've been, I preached heavy on the Holy Ghost for a while now. Maybe that's why it looks a little empty. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people don't want the Holy Ghost this day and time. Mm -hmm. they, want some, they want a God they can keep in their own box. But listen, a God you can keep in a box is not a God at all. Amen. And it will not suffice in a time we're living in. Right. This virus thing is just one of many things that's come along. And, gonna, and the next one's down the pike and people will forget about this one six months from now. Mm -hmm. 
There shall no evil befall thee, nor shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Now, me and God have had some heart-to-hearts about this verse through the years. Because I've claimed it a lot of times. And sickness has showed up in my house. Right? It says, no plague shall come nigh thy dwelling. And I've researched it out and I've done all those things. And you know what he finally told me? Because up here before he said, don't fear pestilence and all that. He said, pestilence is sickness. He said, you ain't had no plague show up yet. You'll know it when it it comes. Mm -hmm. Come on, the the children of Egypt had some plagues. There's been some plagues throughout there. And so, if this thing, which I'm not saying it is, don't misquote me, if this coronavirus was a plague that was released, you could stand in faith that it's not going to come now. your... What's that mean? Whatever God is doing upon the earth when His judgment is moving, you're safe. And, 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 and people think He's still not going to do anything. Listen, He's a God of love. He loves you. I preach it strong. Amen. But listen, there's some stuff He ain't putting up with, and there's, gonna, there's a judgment time coming. Amen. It just is what it is. Mm-hmm. And there's some plagues and things that are going to come that the closer the end days get here. And the good news is if you stay under his covering, you ain't got to worry about it. Fear can't have no hold on you. Now it said, listen, it said, do not fear when pestilence comes, right? Yeah. It didn't say that pestilence wasn't going to come. Mm-hmm. You know what flu and all that stuff? <laughs> it's a pest. <laughs> come on. Come on, now, isn't it? All this sickness, the type we're talking about, it's a pest. You say, well, I think cancer is more than a, than, a, than a pest. Well, I don't disagree, but from what the Lord showed me, it fits in the pestilence category, which then takes us that uh, in Isaiah, it says, by his stripes, we were healed. We are healed. And 1 Peter 2.24 says we were healed. Mm-hmm. Right? Amen. It says, call for the elders of the church and on with all the prayer of faith shall save the sick over in James 5. Right? Mm-hmm. So, if you really... So, listen, I, I'm with some of you. I'm resisting some sickness in my body. And when I first started resisting it, it really messed with me. I don't think preachers should go around sick. Just mm-hmm. my personal opinion. But that's like the pot calling the kettle black anymore here lately. <laughs> because I'm not above... Listen, but then I started researching... The, uh, well, look how many times people, when Jesus' own ministry camp, uh, mother-in-law was fixing the food, and she was sick, and she was right, she was right there with him. He had to curse that thing, right, Marks? And, and so, but you and Paul had an affliction. You, you can go down through there, you go down through history, even like with Smith Wigglesworth and all these things. The enemy is just, it was going to bring things, but none of them walked in fear, and eventually the thing broke. Mm-hmm. Are you all with me? Yes. So. It shall come nigh thy dwelling. You remember when they put the blood on the doorpost? Because there was what? A plague coming. They were going to kill the firstborn, right? And so when they put the blood on the doorpost, the death angel had to pass by. I really believe that the plague means something's coming to kill you. And you have a promise that they doesn't have that power anymore because the blood's been applied. Amen. Come on, are you with me this morning? You get some enlightenment? So that means whenever the big C comes and those things that are going to kill you, you say, you know what? You don't have the authority to kill me. You might be able to bring some things in my body, but they're not staying in Jesus' name. You might have brought some stuff, but I'm returning it to sender. The blood's been applied, and you just go on by. Amen. Amen. Y'all getting something this morning? We're only on the first verse. I got plenty of time. Oh, Sister Bonnie tells me I'm running out here lately. I must be feeling better. <laughs> For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Did it say some of your ways? No. Oh. oh. So, listen, we don't pray to angels. So there's a bunch of stupid people doing that. We don't worship angels. We don't sit there and talk about angels. We don't try to name our angels and every other ignorant thing that people are doing today. Mm-hmm. 
We praise God, we worship Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and we speak the word, and when we speak the word, angels are released, but that ain't none of our business, it ain't in our wheelhouse. But we need to know that they are being done. I believe in angels, ministering angels are released all the time. But if you hear somebody talking about their personal angel, their name, and all that other stuff, just just, just turn off, it's just stupid. Yes, amen. Just smile. <laughs> you be stupid. Why am I saying that? Because if you haven't heard it already, you will hear it coming as the end of the days get closer. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. They shall tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon, shall thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver them. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He called upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. How many know you got to have something to be delivered from? Amen. How many know when you call upon him, you got to be in trouble? Mm -hmm. But you have a sure cry whenever you say, Lord, help! Help, God! He, boom! You start quoting the word. Lord, you said no sickness shall come nigh my dwelling. You said, no pestilence for me not to be afraid of. I curse you. See, something happens because a lot of times when you get sick, man, I tell you what, hospitals and doctor's offices, they're like faith-sucking machines. Mm -hmm. You lay in them for a while, and you got to come in and have a blood, mm -hmm. faith transfusion from somebody. Mm -hmm. And that's usually my job as pastor. If I know all your faith's been sucked out, I just I show up smiling. And I keep going cutting jokes. That's because I came to give you some faith because I know you're running on empty. Amen. Come on. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you start rising up. Why? Because you start, because see, we need to look at that thing, that fear thing, and we need to go, I curse you in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Bible say to this mountain, be cast in the sea, and it shall be. Mark chapter 11, verses 22 through 26. He didn't say, it's not always, listen, there is a time when you call for the elder church and they, they know him with oil. Come on. And you will be sick there. There's a season for that. And sometimes you need that. If you've been speaking to that thing and it's been being real resistant, there's a time when you need to come to the front. Boom. But it's always out, never out of fear. What happens, though, is we get something, and whether we know it or not in this day and time, we instantly go into a, a, a stage of fear. Something gets said, fear. You need to start getting the boldness and unfeigned faith, genuine faith, that overcomer's faith, where you speak to that thing and say, No, not today. Amen. Not ever. Amen. I curse that in Jesus' name. I was like, Well, the pastor, I did that, and I went back to the doctor, and they told me I still had something. Well, that means you get up tomorrow and you do it again. And you do it the next day and you do it again. And you stand in faith until that thing is done. Amen. You ever watch something that was a really bad wound? Unless God miraculously heals it, it's a process. Amen. And that word healing means process. Sometimes it's a process, and if the enemy can halt you along the way, he'll halt your process, which means he'll halt your healing. That's some good praise to Sister Deb. Amen. <laughs> but we're to be fear destroyers. The first thing we got to destroy in our own life. Lord, I'm never going to get to be where you called me. My bow is never coming. <laughs> My future wife's never here. If he can, if he can make speak the world into existence, if he can pay his taxes out of a fish's mouth, Amen. you really think your issue's that big? I found usually the issue has always been me. Getting me in alignment with the word. Yeah. But listen. Fear will get you unbelief and it'll steal your faith and then you'll never get the promises God had for you. But today, when your co-workers, you go to work tomorrow and everybody's talking about the, you know, there was a coronavirus sighted here and there was a coronavirus sighted there. You know, you know what I want to tell them? I've just kind of been in my spirit here lately. It's a good thing I don't probably have a public forum right now other than this and a few thousand people watching online. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they worried about how many died from the coronavirus and they've killed 700,000 babies so far this year. Mm -hmm. 
how many more babies died in the last year than they done. And that's the coronavirus I've ever, man. You talk about a virus, that's a virus. Right. Mm -hmm. Moving along. <laughs> Amen. You shall call upon me, I'll deliver long. With long life, I will satisfy thee and show thee my salvation. How many of you promises you long life? Amen. Listen, and there's no appointed time to be sick. There is an appointed time to die, and we don't get to negotiate that. Always. I mean, King Hezekiah did. He got 10 more years. God didn't give you that fear. Don't accept it. You know, fear is something you grow up with. It's something that becomes so part of our uh, culture that it's just something you tolerate. Mm -hmm. it just uh, Some people even get excitement out of it. Yeah. Horror movies. Oh. Haunted houses. Drag races. <laughs> oh, she had to go there. Oh, drag, which is true, drag races. Airplane jumping. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with adrenaline, okay? But there is something wrong. But people, they just—it's just become part of who it's become part of who you are. If you don't have fear, if, yeah. And I'm not talking. Somebody says God's called you to be fearless. No, God's called you to be a conqueror over fear. Amen. Not all fear is bad. Sometimes it's common sense kicking in. Right. You know, don't mess with the rattlesnake. Amen. That's a good. That's a great idea. Our sister Heather would say, don't mess with the spider. <laughs> <laughs> I thank God whom I serve for my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have a remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. I greatly desire to see thee, being, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I come to remembrance, the unfeigned faith, and I got a message on this, you can go get all it from years ago, which means that unfeigned faith means pure, sincere, and genuine. How many of the world is looking for genuine faith? Amen. Not a bunch of hype, not a bunch of, they want to see you living out your faith. And if you want to be a fear destroyer, you're going to have to have genuine faith. You can't get it on Grandma's faith, Mama's faith, Uncle Joe. it got to be yours. And faith, is, uh, faith without works is dead. That means it's got to be actively doing something. Right? Right. Okay. That is in thee, which first dwelt in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded in thee also. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gifts of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. See, sometimes, like I was talking about earlier, you just lay hands on your belly and start praying in the Holy Ghost. He quoted a little bossy shatad and a little bossy. He quoted a little bossy shatad and a little bossy. See the joy. See that? It's like somebody put on the. You ever seen the little bubbling fountains? That's what you feel like. We're like, ooh, that feel pretty good. <laughs> you need to do that at home. Amen. If you want to be a fear destroyer, boom, lay them hands on there, start praying in the Holy Ghost. I don't care if what 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 Jim Blow on TV says or somebody else, I'm telling you, as your pastor, go and do it. It works. Amen. It's right there in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And you said, so I need some more scripture on that. Well, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. You heard the Word of God. He said, pray in the Holy Ghost in Jude one twenty to build up your most holy faith. And here we say, he said, stir up the gifts that are already in you by laying on of hands. So laying on of hands, Jude one twenty, praying in the Holy Ghost, woo! All of a sudden, uh, something starts a chugging. The train comes back. The fake train. Chugga, 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 chugga. Woo! Chugga, 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 chugga. Woo! <laughs> and then all of a sudden, man, things start shaking. And fear starts running. They're like, man, the fake giant's back alive again. What am I going to do now? You're going to run, brother. Because overcoming faith starts coming out. That warrior starts coming out. And all of a sudden, man, you fear says, I want no part of this. I want out of here. Right. <laughs> Verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So if God didn't give it to you, 
Why in the world would you accept it? You know how many times the devil just kind of sneaks up to you? He, he, he's almost like a one of those waiters at some those highfalutin parties. You don't even know it's there and all of a sudden something's in front of you and you just feel like you have to take something off there. <laughs> you just, that's, that's the courteous thing to do, right? <laughs> that's almost what he's like when he brings fear to you. He just serves it up on a nice silver platter, just walks by, here you go. <laughs> And you feel like you have to take it. But God didn't give it to you. So I just came to tell you this morning. First off, if you want to be a fear destroyer, quit taking fear. Amen. Quit accepting it when it comes. That's the best way to be a fear destroyer. Mm -hmm. Stop accepting it. He's giving you a power <laughs> of love and a sound mind. And so it's your self-control. How many know there's power through the Holy Ghost? That's what I was talking about earlier about laying on of hands. As we've seen earlier in this verse, right? Mm -hmm. So when you do that, fear starts to shatter, correct? Mm -hmm. Glory. Another verse says, God will never give you the spirit of fear. Oh, I missed one. For God has not given us the, no, this is, God, God will not give you a spirit of fear, but the Holy Spirit who gives you mighty power, love, and self-control. So what's the Holy Spirit give you? Mighty power. How many thinks you can, you, you can whip some fear with some mighty power? Amen. How many think sometimes you got to get into that overcoming faith? Amen. How many think you sometimes maybe you need to go get a, you need to go refill the faith train? Yeah. Amen. 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 God's spirit doesn't make us doesn't make cowards out of us. Now this is a touchy subject, and if we had people in here that were facing terminal illnesses, I would say the same things. I might just say them with a little more truth. You understand what I'm saying? To that it means I'd be more sensitive, but they're going to get the same message. Because when you're facing those things, and you've done it in your own strength, and somebody calls you a coward, you just won't punch them in the face. Mm -hmm. But the difference is, is they were doing it in their own strength. They weren't in the shadow of the Almighty. But then what happens, even maybe if you were the shadow of the Almighty and you opened the door up and you took that little thing on that silver tray that came by, now all of a sudden fear is overwhelming your faith. Mm -hmm. Fear is getting you into unbelief and unbelief is taking away your faith. Now, all of a sudden, uh, that you're more scared of fear than you are anything else. And that thing inside you that used to rise up and defeat it is now cowering in the corner. God's not, but you are. Mm -hmm. Y'all with me? Amen. So God didn't make us cowards, right? Mm -hmm. The Spirit gives us power, love, and self-control. So first, you know what you got to believe? you got to believe in the Holy Ghost. You need to get believed. You need to believe in good old full gospel, getting filled of the Holy Ghost down in your toes where your toes are tingling, your head's going through a feeling you can't describe like your body's electrified and the power of the Holy Ghost is coming up out of your mouth and your tongue is talking another language. That is the first thing you need to get. Amen. If you ain't truly filled with the Holy Ghost in this last days, you better get filled. You can make heaven without it, but why in the world would you want to be that difficult? And then once you get filled, you need to realize there's power in it. It does a whole lot more than make your tongue talk funny languages. It does a whole lot more than make your tongue talk funny languages. That's what those gifts are coming stirring up. When you start praying in the Holy Ghost, so you start filling that thing up. He And then faith train starts coming. And all of a sudden, you know what? When you see a train coming down the road, what do you think? Do you think I'm going to get up there and park on the tracks? You think I got to get out of the way. Listen, if you keep the faith train going, that's how this fear feels. It's like, I got to get out of the way. And that's what happens when you come in a room. Your peace will go down and fear will go, I got to get out of the way. <laughs> they run in the faith train. I ain't about to get run over up in here. Amen. <coughs> 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 
Jump on right there. Jump on right Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me as prisoner, but be thou partaker of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God. Yeah, we're going to skip ahead. We're about done. We've only got a couple more sheets. How long could that take? One sheet. We're going to go right over here. Be healed, stay in Christ. Mark 16, 15. He said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth. Do you believe that Jesus is Lord? Amen. You made him son of, he maybe made him Lord of your life? Amen. And is baptized. He's been dumped in the water and made a statement. Amen. Have you been filled with the Holy Ghost? Says, so shall be saved. And he that believeth not shall be damned. Don't go to hell. It'd be dumb to go to hell over something stupid, wouldn't it? You know what's stupid? Anything that gets you to go to hell. <laughs> When all the good stuff's this side of the fence. That life everybody wants. I've got a, I've got a good friend. He's probably watching online. We've been friends 30 some years. He's been in and out of church the last few years. I've led him to the Lord finally. But and he wasn't raised in church. He was a complete atheist growing up. But he's watched my life for the last 25. We've been friends longer than that. 40, I don't know. Almost all our lives. And... Uh, when his world gets upside down, I guess he's phony rings. Except for, I will say this time, he, he didn't call. I called him because I couldn't get him off my heart. I'd been praying for a few days. And so I found, I just sent him a text message. I said, what in the world are you doing? And he takes me back. He said, my wife just left me. I said, well, I guess that's why I can't get you off my heart. And so we were talking, and, and then finally he got down to it, and he just, he said, will you pray? He says, when you pray, things change, man. He said, I can't understand it. I don't understand all this stuff. I just know when you pray, something happens. Mm -hmm. I said, sure. And unless I'm not making this about me. And so, and then he, he's going to be coming up soon here in another week or two. That's usually most of them boys, in case you ain't noticed, when their life gets upside down, they make an appearance up here. <laughs> and they go back home. <laughs> but, uh, see, I put something in called peace that gave him hope. And whether she does or doesn't, that doesn't determine his outcome. His outcome is determined by how he serves God. But he finally, he made a statement. He said, man, he said, God's sure been good to you. He said, i never seen nothing like it. I said, it's not because who I am. It's because who God is in me. Amen. And I used to look at people and I'd see how blessed they were when I was coming up and I'd been already serving God 10 years. And I'd be thinking, man, God, What's the difference? They like made of gold or something. And I'm still over here. I'm applying faith, but I'm struggling a little bit. And he said, I'm, I'm working on you. He said, you keep your mouth shut in your heart, right? And then all of a sudden, I was telling Pastor Tammy, I'm trying, I'm going to try to get this out the right way. It's a small crowd. I ought to be able to get by with this. <laughs> but you know, it's hard to explain things. When God tells me to get something, I don't care what the cost is. I just go and get it these days. I don't worry about the price. I don't worry about food. He said he'd take care of that, take care of my house. Now listen, i got to pray in to get finances for the church, and I pray those in, I pray in the other things. But if he tells me to do something, I don't even care what other people think about it. I'm talking about personal here. Mm -hmm. I go and get it. We're used to, I'd have had to run the numbers, do all those things, try to figure out where it's going to come from. Now listen, if you ain't there, don't go make a mess. I ain't say go get whatever you wanted. <laughs> There's a difference. Are you all hearing, Pastor? Yes. But I just, just relax in it. And it's amazing, there'll be some check show up, something show up, and he'll pay for it. I'm like, oh God, you're just so cool. <laughs> and I just keep rolling. What's what we've been doing here for 10 years? We just kept rolling. Because I refused to get in fear. Amen. When we founded the church, I, saw, I was talking about faith. See, it takes faith to break the chains in your life. Amen. A lot of you have broken those. But it also takes faith to be, become an overcomer. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. But it also takes overcoming faith to become a fear destroyer. Mm -hmm. And that's what God's calling you to be. But So I, want, I just want to a uh, few things to take away this week. Uh, I want to encourage you to stay in the Word. I want you to encourage you praying in the Holy Ghost. I want to encourage you laying hands on yourself. And I want to encourage you to watch what you're thinking on and watch what you're acting on. I want you to be super conscious 
of being actively destroying fear in your life. Amen. And then I want you to start practicing destroying fear in other people's lives. Yeah. Now, I'm not talking about doing the crazy stuff. That's how Pentecostals got trouble. They'd be coming up to you. Oh, Sean and I laid hands on them in a little grocery store. And they go, oh, you know. Now, I've done that before. God's had me lay hands on somebody. We got slain in the Holy Ghost right in the grocery store. But he told me to do it. I can take authority without making a show, you know. I can walk in a room and say, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And all of a sudden, Yep, it stops. The arguing stops. Now listen, sometimes you have some, persist some persistent spirits, but so did Jesus. Don't be getting down on yourself. He had to directly talk to some of them. Yeah. Come on, right? Yeah. There was a season in my life when I started practicing this, but I, felt, I, felt, I met up with some persistent ones, and I said, well, Lord, am I doing it wrong? You told me just to take authority. And I took authority mm -hmm. over that fear and over that thing. They say, well, some of these only come out by prayer and fasting. Right. Sometimes you got to be ready. Like a little, it takes a little more effort. It's a whole other subject. But how many believe God has called you to be a fear destroyer in these last days? Amen. How many would like to see a different atmosphere in your workplace? Amen. How about how about in our country? Amen. But the only way they're going to do that is through Jesus Christ, Amen. right? Amen. Now listen. There is difficult things come up that that fear <laughs> is a natural emotion. You know, if something happens to your children, those things, it's not okay to get into the spirit of fear, but that first coming up is natural, but you can't buy into it. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. When my kid falls down and busts his head open, I don't, well, sometimes I do depend <laughs> I don't go, get up, you're fine. <laughs> I go, oh, Lord, come over here, let me check you out. Lord, in Jesus' name. You know, and depending on the severity of it, you know, when he busted his head, when he cracked his skull wide open and blood was coming out, I could see his brains, and I'm holding on with the ER getting there. I was praying in the Holy Ghost, but my heart, I, the spirit of fear tried to jump in and say, oh, he's dead. <laughs> and then I said, I had to come back to that thing. I said, no, he's not. <laughs> he's he's going to live and not die. I'm gonna, and then he, God miraculously put his brain back together. It's a true story. He still got the scar on his head. You can probably see it this morning. He's got a haircut. <laughs> so what I'm trying to tell you, sometimes even as I was been learning this, I just want to get this across. I start. I went for a season. I thought that just having that emotion was so bad that I beat myself up tremendously. You can't stop always the spirit of fear from coming to you, which you can stop accepting it. Amen. Do you understand the difference? Do you understand what I'm saying this morning? All right. Verse 17. And these signs shall follow them in my name. They shall cast out devils. Anybody ready to go cast out some devils? we got a whole bunch of them in Springfield. <laughs> Y'all get ready. We're about to hit the streets again. Woo! Glory! I hope they take off running <laughs> coming down the streets. No! Amen. We get them anyways in Jesus' name. Y'all think I'm playing, don't you? <laughs> and they shall speak with new tongues. Okay. All you deep scholars anywhere out in the world. What in the world does that mean? That don't mean talking in the Holy Ghost. I know some of you, I've read some of y'all's theories and commentaries. You know, it takes more faith to believe that than just to believe this. So, verse 18, they shall take up serpents. Now, you start passing a serpent bucket around in here, we're going to have a come to Jesus talk. Amen. He said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Yeah, yeah. Don't be an idiot. Yeah. Yep, but you. I've been snake bit twice by poisonous snakes that should have killed me. And guess what? I'm still standing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, I have a healthy dislike of snakes, but they don't. Uh, the fear is gone, praise God. Mm -hmm. After the last one got a hold of me, I thought, that's the best you've got. But I ain't sure going to stick my hand in there and, sit, and ask them to try to have another piece. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, are you with me? Yes. I mean, that's like a drug addict going back to play with the drugs. You have a right to be fear if you go back and play with that mess. Mm -hmm. But if you ain't, you won't have no fear at all because God's delivered you. Mm -hmm. 
Come on, are you understanding this morning? Some of you out there listening online, I know. I can feel you. And if they drink any deadly thing, praise God for this. I have drank some deadly stuff. <laughs> some of it manifested, but I'm still standing. But how many times, you know, the doctors tell you, well, you got this and this, this chemical and that chemical. How many of our government people today, they're always putting stuff in the water, in the grounds, in your food. And you need to be smarter about what you eat. I agree. I can tell you what, when I'm out of country and I, buy, I eat food that doesn't have all the chemicals in it, I feel a million times better after about two weeks. Mm -hmm. And I come back here and all these processed chemicals, and listen, I'm not some natural nut. If y'all don't know me better than I'm not some guy that's always trying to peddle something. I'm just telling you, I, I have seen the difference over and over again. The Holy Ghost has brought it to me. And I'm working on it. But saying that, I'm like, well, Lord, what do I want to do? And then you have Christians that get so far out there that they get in a spirit of fear over what they're eating. Mm -hmm. Listen, if I'm doing the best I can with the money he's given me, and I'm making wise choices the best that I can, then I can believe there ain't none of that junk in there going to hurt me. Do you understand the difference? Amen. And then it goes on, and they shall, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they might get up eventually. Nope. They shall recover. They what? They shall <laughs> now, when was the last time you laid hands on somebody and stood there until they were recovered? I'm waiting. Every time you do this, the spirit of fear will try to show up. Mm -hmm. try to tell you that that ain't true, that you ain't God, that you ain't this and you ain't that. Well, I tell you a secret that God gave me all the time. It's not about me. It's about his word. Amen. I'm not performing the action his word is. I just have to be a vessel fit for the master's use. If I got that part down, I can lay hands on you and I'm expecting. And then I'll probably ask you to do something. <laughs> yeah, I'm one of those crazy preachers that ask you to demonstrate that you just got healed. I know it makes people mm -hmm. uncomfortable sometimes. Like you see it in their eyes. They're like, well, what happens if fear tries to come in? What happens if nothing works? <laughs> well, we'll go pray again. <laughs> Give me a Let's try it. Let's make sure God did it. Yeah. But each time, old fear shows up. And you've got to be a fear destroyer. Sometimes people come to the altar, and I know when I lay my hands on them, there's nothing going in because the spirit of fear is ruling them. True story. Yeah. So what do I do? Do I throw them away? No, I just keep loving on them, keep giving them the word, and keep praying for them that things will be shattered in their minds. So eventually one day, hopefully they'll just wake up from their slumber and decide to get rid of it. Amen. 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 So then after the Lord spoke unto them, he was received in the heavens of the right of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord working with them. So it didn't say they were doing it. It says the Lord was working with them, right? Mm -hmm. And were the sign who who was following the signs them, or were the signs following them? Today's world, we hear about somebody hears about God doing something over here, and everybody goes to check that out. Somebody hears about God doing something over here, and they go to check that out. Listen, I decided a long time ago I want to be the guy that signs are followed. Amen. I ain't worried about what everybody else is doing. I, I'm not them. But by George, there's going to be signs following me in my life. I'm going to leave a mark through my life where people can tell where I've been, where I've Amen. stepped, and what miracles God has done in it. Amen. And I can't do that with the spirit of fear. Now listen, there's several. There's some days, I'm going to be honest, that that dude shows up two or three times a day. Especially when I start getting resistant. I'm human. But what did I tell you I do? I go get alone. I put, I lay my hands on myself. I start praying in the Holy Ghost. I read the Word. And then that freight train gets going. Woo! Choo -choo. All of a sudden, man, overcoming faith comes. And I'm whipping that thing. Mm -hmm. And that's what you've got to do. And when you come into a room, stop being a, 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 stop being a, a, a thermometer. And start being a thermostat of the peace of God. It's in you. I can't, you know, I used to be one of those guys who complained about his work environment. Finally, one day I was complaining to God. You know, listen, if you're going to find somebody complaining to you, God's probably not the right one just for that. <laughs> but I was. I was young and naive. He said, well, do something about it. I said, well, I can't change nothing. I can't do nothing. He said, oh, really? That's where I got all these verses from. 
He said, you've been reading it. Let me bring it back to your remembrance. I said, woo. And I started doing something. It didn't happen overnight. But it started changing. It's still changing. To this day, there's a whole factory down there. When our world gets upside down, they say, where's preacher at nowadays? I need to call him. I'll, and I'll get a phone call. You remember me? And I'm like, mm. I was the guy that did this to you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember you. I wanted to punch you in the head, but I walked it up. <laughs> I'm just telling like it was. Don't worry. That part of me has died. I don't have those tendencies anymore. Only my only person I want to punch is the enemy, Amen. and I punch him repeatedly. <laughs> and when he messes with you, I punch him too. Amen. Somebody say, "Well, I ain't been here that long." You don't have to be here that long. I, I get I, through the spirit. I get attached quick, so when they leave, it hurts twice as much. But anyhow, Amen. but if you're here this morning, I want you to realize that you are a fear destroyer. You. Have the anointing of God inside you. And fear does not rule you. You rule over it. Amen. And you need to go through this world destroying fear. Amen. You're going to face it. You're even going to have the emotion of it. But that's not the same as accepting it. And I think it's time that the church recognize that. We There's been two camps. One camped on one side one camped on the other. Let's just be genuine about our faith. Amen. You know, that's why whenever you're about to get in a car wreck, your adrenaline goes up and you do something. Why? Because you've got natural born fear that says, hey, this is going to hurt, stupid. Mm -hmm. But then after the crash is over, over and they tell you this or that, then you got to decide, and then you know what? I'm done with fear. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. 